Okay, that's enough of that. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you tips on how I grew my hair out to this length. Is it waist length? Cause I mean, I cut off an inch or two yesterday. So, oh, yep, yep, it is waist length still. Okay, great, <laughs> excellent. Anyway, so yes, today I'm going to be sharing with you all my tips on how I was able to grow my hair out so long. My hair has always been long, um, ever since I can remember, but I've never had it this long and this healthy at the same time. I will show you guys my natural hair journey um, video soon. It's just taking a bit of time to gather all pictures and yeah, so it's, it's, it's one of those daunting videos, but I will do it just to show you guys where I'm coming from. I would say I'm in between a lazy natural and one of those ones who do the most to get their hair at its best. I like to try a lot of different things as well with my hair. Not anything that will damage my hair, but I like to use natural hair mask. So I will try different, different things in my hair in that aspect. Most of my growth came from when I was pregnant and my hair grew out really long and I couldn't really cut my hair myself because I don't go to the hairdresser so I couldn't really cut my hair because you know the big bump and I had a really painful pregnancy and afterbirth so I had to really wait until I get my strength back to cut my hair which I did and I haven't cut it since so it's been about a year since I cut my hair and it was it was in a bad way I'm not gonna lie I've never left my hair for a whole year before and it wasn't a bad way and I had to cut off about two inches probably needed a little bit more but I'm not about to do that I'll probably just do another trim in three months so yeah anyways so that's just a brief overview of what my hair's been through for the past year so now I'm going to share some tips that might help you reach your desired length as well so for some of you you might have tried to grow your hair out and you're finding it difficult or you think your hair can't grow out long but your hair does grow it's just about how you retain that growth so my first tip for you is to detangle your hair on damp or wet hair only do not try and detangle your hair when it's dry not even finger detangle when your hair is dry because that is just a no it's just a no just don't do it <laughs> you will surely snag your hair off i know that hair is more vulnerable when it's wet but if you imagine for our hair which is curly and coily and you're just trying to drag your curls when it's dry with no sort of moisture no slip your hair just gonna break off so just don't comb it when it's dry only when it's wet or damp okay even when I detangle my hair and um, when it's wet or damp sometimes I I see my ends just falling off like all those little small hairs that you see in in your sink or on the floor when you're brushing your hair out that could be your ends just falling off because of the vigorous way that you're combing out your hair and I mean sometimes I'm not careful sometimes I might slip up sometimes and be like, oh crap do you know what I mean but um no I really do take my time and detangling and only when it's wet so because the hair is more vulnerable when it's wet you do have to take care when you're detangling your hair so what i do what i always do is i start from the bottom towards my roots i never go in from the top and try to drag my hair down no you will end up with like knots in the middle hair and you're trying to come through that and then you'll just break your hair off it will just break so definitely handle your hair with care when it's wet. And the reason why you should detangle your hair when it's damp or wet is because you need that moisture, you, you need that slip, you know, to help that comb or that brush go through your hair nice and easily. Also, I never try to detangle my hair without it being in the sections because my hair is thick. And if I just try and go in for the kill and detangle my hair, like I'm not gonna get anywhere. So I make sure to divide my hair in four and work on one section at a time. Some people use more sections because their hair might be more thick. 
Um, some people might use less because their hair is thinner. It's just all depending on your hair and what your hair requires and what's easier for you as well. So yeah, just take care of your hair and be gentle with it and be kind to it. Because honestly, I hate to hear that snagging noise. I hate, even if it's just one strand, it just makes me cringe when I hear that snagging noise. And especially when you're hearing it while someone else is doing it to their own hair. It's like, I'm just like, no, can I take over? Ugh. Just stop, just stop, just. Also, when I am detangling and I have like big knots in my hair, I like to finger detangle it bit by bit, even if I have to go strand by strand, well, maybe not strand by strand, but you know what I mean, like little bit by little bit to get that knot out. Because if you're going with, comb, with the comb or the brush, you're just gonna hurt your hair. <laughs> So if you're struggling with the brush and the comb, finger detangle. I do have a video on how I detangle my hair. I'll link it up here and I'll put it in the description box below as well. And on that day, my hair was really knotty. So yeah. So yeah, you, you don't want to hear that snapping noise. Like that's a big no. That's telling you that you're breaking your own hair. So just don't do it. Make sure you don't hear that snagging noise when you're combing your hair. Or when you're doing your hair in general, even if it's straightening, especially when you're styling your hair and you're putting your fingers through it. And no, you don't want to hear no snagging noise at all. Moving on swiftly. Right, so my next tip is to wear low manipulation hairstyles. So for me, my hairstyles are always low manipulation hairstyles unless... I've decided to do an updo or restyle my braid out or my twist out or whatever. So the easiest low manipulation hairstyle for me was or is wash and goes. And I will literally wash my hair, you know, style it with the wash and go. And I would just rock my wash and go for the whole week. If it is a really good wash and go, it will last me the whole week. If it's not a great wash and go, it might last me three to four days. And then I would have to put my hair up in a bun or restyle it with a braid out or something like that. But I try to avoid that as much as possible. That's why it's so important for me to, you know, get a really good combination for my wash and goes because I want it to last for the whole week. So what low manipulation hairstyles do to benefit your hair is that it reduces the chances of any breakage happening because you're not manipulating your hair. So that whole week when I'm wearing a wash and go, when I'm not manipulating my hair at all, that's that whole week I've gone without any breakage happening. Well, apart from like, if I slip up and don't wear my hair scarf to bed or, you know, it rubbing up on my clothes or whatever. But besides that, I'm not doing any extra damage to my hair, basically. So my other low manipulation hairstyles are twist outs, braid outs, and also my juicy twists. I literally rocked Juicy Twist throughout the past six months being in COVID anyway, but um, also because I was on maternity leave and I was at home most of the time, I just used to put my hair in Juicy Twist and whenever they got messy, I would just redo the front four. I've got a video on that as well, if you would like to see that. And sometimes I would leave my Juicy Twist in for four weeks and they would still look moisturizer and nourish obviously i would apply some moisturizer to the ends of my hair and then i would apply some of my oil mixture on my scalp as well from week to week but when i used to take out my hair from those twists they were so hydrated still so that was four weeks of no manipulation no breakage no snagging nothing and i honestly believe that's how or why my hair was able to grow the length it is right now. But I know, I understand that not everybody's gonna want to wear juicy twists or plaits for four weeks and have them look like Natty Dreads and, <laughs> you know. But I had that time to do that because I was at home all the time with the baby. So, but I mean, two strand twists can be very wearable as well. I mean, if you just you know, redo the front. If you check out my video, right, of me refreshing my Juicy Twist, you'll see that I would look so crusty and within a matter of minutes, I looked refreshed again. You don't have to wear them down, you can wear them up, you can wear it half up, half down. Juicy Twists are so versatile and I'm an advocate for them. I recommend them for anyone who wants to grow out their hair long. 
because that's exactly what I did and that's the difference I would say that I've done this year compared to previous years so juicy twists braid outs twist outs wash and goes do whatever's the most easiest for you low manipulation hairstyles is where it's at so the chance of breakage would have increased throughout those four weeks if I had manipulated my hair or you know played with my hair a lot more I think I stumbled across them after birth yeah I stumbled across them on my maternity leave and I was like I need a hairstyle that I can just do and just forget about and yeah juicy twists i've got a video on that if you want to go check it out i'll link it in the description box as well you can do protective hairstyles as well um because that is part of low manipulation as well but i've only wore box braids in my hair well i used to do box braids with my natural hair in school but with extensions i've only done box braids in my hair once and i don't know it just i felt like my hair was different when i took them out especially with the dirt and the dust part at the top i had a bit of trouble getting that out of my hair and i only had it in for six weeks maybe i wasn't supposed to keep it in for that long but what's the point in spending nine hours doing box braids for to only just take them out in three weeks that's a waste of my time so i don't really fuss with protective styles i do love the way it looked though i <laughs> I loved my book braids, I loved it. I might actually do a tutorial on them because they actually came out so perfect. Yeah, maybe if I find a quicker way to do because that took me forever. <sighs> Jeez. Maybe I'll just do them a bit bigger so it takes less time. Okay, so maybe have a video for the box braids coming soon. Maybe, maybe. Anyway, so any low manipulation hairstyle where you don't have to style your hair every day will work. So my next tip, which is probably one of the hardest things to manage and maintain is your protein and moisture balance and this is something that i even struggle with to this very day yeah you just have to really really learn your hair and really listen to your hair with me a few years ago i had to chop my hair off and i mean big chopped my hair off my hair was literally just touching my shoulders and I did like a diva cut with my hair basically so my hair was like shaped like so I might put a picture over here just so that you can see I cut my hair when it was curly so that it can have a better shape when I wear it my wash and goes so this was about four years ago 2016 so what made me do that is because my hair was moving mad when it was curly you couldn't really tell too much that it was damaged right back then i was wearing my hair half straight half curly and i would literally do either or right so i'll have my hair curly for two weeks and then i'll do my hair straight for two weeks and i was just going on and off like that and that worked perfectly fine for me right i would like to think that the heat wasn't the problem but it probably did contribute to it a little bit but i would have known if my hair was heat damaged right you know what heat damage looks like you would see the flat limp hair and i didn't have that with my curls my curls looked absolutely fine it was just when my hair was straight my hair looked like straw and whenever i used to touch it like this it would make like a crispy noise and i was like what the hell is going on with my hair like i got so fed up of it and it was literally about because my hair wasn't as long. My hair was probably at bra strap length. So I probably had to cut it up here. I was willing to do that because I don't mind chopping off any damaged hair, right? So that wasn't a problem. But I just didn't understand what was happening to my hair. So I didn't actually figure out what was wrong with my hair back then. And I do believe that it was a matter of having that perfect moisture and protein balance so for me when my hair is acting up a little bit i do try and do a protein treatment to see if it will help and i don't remember anything solving my issues so i just got fed up in the end and i just chopped it all off so i think what happened with me was i got lazy and i started to wear my hair up in a bun i would wet my hair put it up in a bun 
and just leave it i would go to bed with my hair in the bun and in the next morning i would just wet it again put it up in a bun so my hair was constantly wet and I think this was the problem. And it's only recently that I've been hearing about this thing called hydro fatigue. And when the girl mentioned it in the video and she was explaining what her hair was doing, I was like, oh, so that's basically what I had. That is basically what I had. I don't know if I could have revived my hair, but that's what I had, hydro fatigue. Hydro fatigue is when you've got too much moisture. So if I had known that it was hydro fatigue, I would have continuously done protein treatments. Not continually, but like I would have tried to do more protein treatments. A one time protein treatment is not gonna fix all your problems. So my hair suffered from hydro fatigue and neglect. <laughs> I mean, it does happen as a natural. Sometimes you might just get fed up with your hair, which I did, because I was in my last year of uni. I was doing a dissertation, I had life stress, I had everything stress. My hair care wasn't my main priority at that time which i obviously do did regret because uh, after that haircut i said no never again i'm never cut my hair short ever again it's so important for you to make sure that you have that moisture and protein balance you can go from perfectly healthy hair to hydro fatigue so i will say if you feel like your hair is acting up i'll start with doing a very nourishing and moisturizing deep conditioner right and if that doesn't help you in any way follow up with a protein treatment the next week to see if that helps out and i mean if none of those do help don't stop trying you can do a nourishing moisturizing protein treatment as well so you can make your own mask for instance you can add an egg you can add avocado and you can add honey and that will give you the protein the moisture and the moisture retention properties from those three ingredients just try try and try and if all fails then it might just be due for a trim also you have to be careful when you're doing a deep conditioner overnight as well because you can give yourself hydro fatigue as well you might feel like oh yeah my hair's so soft after you washed it out or whatever but with hydro fatigue you do feel like your hair is really soft when it's wet so it's when it's dry now where you realize that oh my hair feels really dry and straw like that's when you know you have a problem so yeah just be careful with that um i don't ever deep condition overnight i never do it the longest I deep condition is throughout the day. So I might wash my hair in the morning and wash it out at night. Which is still a long time. Because ideally, an hour should be sufficient. Right? And especially if you got under the hooded dry off for 30 minutes or an hour. That's all you need. Sometimes with me, I don't have time to sit down under a hair dryer. I had time yesterday, but I don't have time most of the time to do that. So I just put my conditioner cap on, I might put some cling film, then the cap on or put the cap on, put my towel over that as well, just to lock some heat in and deep condition my hair. I've never had a problem with leaving it in throughout the day, but I will never condition my hair overnight. And I did it throughout this year or throughout life. <laughs> so yeah, I had to cut off two to three inches of my hair because I didn't know my moisture and protein balance. As I said, when my hair was curly, it seemed fine, but when I straightened my hair, it would be crispy dry. Crispy. So make sure you don't do what I did and just wetting it, putting it up in a bun and leaving it. Make sure you give your hair a chance to dry in between those buns if you really have to wear a bun every day. Also, when you're trying to find out your moisture and your protein balance, don't overdo it with the protein treatments. So for me, at the moment, I probably only do protein once a month. There was a time when I was doing the rice water every two weeks. So I'll do a moisturizing deep conditioner one week and then I'll do the rice water the next week. And I would just alternate. But now, I don't feel like I need to do those extra protein treatments because I didn't feel like my hair was getting a bit more on the drier side. So everybody's moisture protein balance will be different. So with mine, I don't have to do protein every other week. Even though my hair does love protein, it doesn't need it every other week. So I just aim to get that protein treatment in 
once a month and for the rest of the weeks I'm doing a moisturizing deep conditioner so that brings me to my next tip which is to deep condition every week so for the most part I do moisturizing deep conditioners and for one week out of the month I will do a protein treatment I'm still figuring out what my balance is and I've realized that my hair does like protein I'm not protein sensitive and some people might be protein sensitive which will probably mean that they wouldn't like what rice water will do to their hair or oh, they've tried rice water and it's made their hair dry or brittle and they probably wouldn't ever try rice water ever again so those people probably are protein sensitive or they've just used too much protein but i do have my recipe for my rice water coming up on my channel as well so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that video and if you are someone who does protein treatments all the time and you feel like at that time it made your hair dry or brittle or you know not as moisturized maybe you just didn't need a protein treatment at that time so maybe you can cut back on the amount that you do protein treatments i mean when i was growing up I would only do it occasionally, do you know what I mean? I would use the Apogee one where you have to blow dry your hair, stiff dry. I haven't used that in ages because there was one time I didn't like the way it worked on my hair, which is probably because I didn't need the protein. Now I just do rice water and that's been working for me. I wouldn't really make this a separate tip, but an add-on to this tip. I've heard people say they've used rice water overnight and I would never, I wouldn't even dare to do that. I mean... There was one time where I left it in from morning to evening and I felt like that was a bit too long because the recommendation is 30 minutes only but I would say at least give it an hour. I think the time frame for any deep conditioner is 45 minutes to an hour. I don't deep condition for less than that because I just feel like it just needs just a little bit more time to do that rather than the 15 minutes or the five minutes that the recommendation on the package says and i also have seen these videos of people doing rice water every day i could never imagine putting protein in my hair every day i mean protein is in some products don't get me wrong but as a protein treatment every day and leaving it in, not even washing it out, no. It just seems a bit excessive for me to put a protein treatment in my hair every day. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if my hair did become dry and brittle. It just doesn't seem like a good idea. Even in the beginning when I first tried out rice water, I was scared because I was just like, what's it gonna do to my hair? The protein, what's it gonna do to my hair? Is it gonna be too much? And then to even think about putting it in my hair every day, now <laughs> it just doesn't sit right with me so yeah protein once a month or if you feel like you might need it more often than that every other week or if you feel like you need it less than that every six weeks you just have to listen to your hair and work out what your hair needs so my next tip and i don't want to sound like a hypocrite because obviously my hair is straightened at the moment this next tip is to reduce the amount of heat that you apply to your hair so for me in the summertime i wouldn't even try to straighten my hair because it would just get sweated out anyway so i did used to wear my hair curly but in the winter times i would straighten my hair wear it for two weeks and wash it out wear my curly hair for two weeks and, and go back to back with that but for the past two to three years, I haven't been doing that. I've just been wearing my wash and goes or whatever natural hairstyle that I decide to have and occasionally straightening my hair. And I'll say in the past two years, I've literally only been straightening my hair to trim my hair. And back then I was trimming my hair about every three months. So I would straighten my hair every three months and trim it and then go back to wearing my hair curly. But then in those summer months, I wouldn't bother trimming it at all. And I'll just wait for my birthday to straighten and trim again. So that's probably been the change for this year is that I've reduced my amount of heat I've put in my hair. So in this whole year, I've probably only straightened my hair. I can't remember. Maybe it was about two or three times anyway. So yeah, reduce the amount of heat in your hair. Even with my wash and goes, my braid outs, my twist outs, I would let those air dry. If you wanted to blow dry your hair so you can do a fluffy braid out on blow dried hair, I wouldn't think that's 
as damaging as say straightening your hair right even though it is direct heat so really and truly it's just to reduce the amount that you straighten your hair but I mean for me I do like to have my hair straight I like to have that change and whenever I feel like I want to wear my hair straight I'm going to wear my hair straight I'm just a bit more aware now and I don't want to cause my hair any damage and so I'm just more careful with how I apply the heat so yeah I wouldn't say don't ever wear your hair straight because I like to wear my hair straight I like my straight hairstyle sometimes as well yeah I do love a sleek style every now and then I've never had any sort of heat damage but when I first started wearing my hair curly I did have heat trained hair so my curl pattern was a lot different to what it is right now and I, what I realized as I use less and less heat my curls were popping more the curl pattern was becoming more curly and coily which made my hair shrink a lot more so even though I thought okay cause I always had this idea in my head that I wanted to have my curly hair to be long cray down my back right but I I've come to realize that my hair is never going to be like that because the healthier it gets the more coily it gets and it's just it's just going to stay here it's not going to get longer than that it's just going to grow that way if anything do you know what I mean <laughs> so yeah if I want to rock my length I've got to show it when I straighten it because the shrinkage is real so my next tip for you guys is to keep your hair moisturized so as you know I used to wear a lot of low manipulation hairstyles right okay so for my juicy twists for example even though I was wearing them for four weeks straight I would make sure that I would moisturize my hair every week. I have my own mixture of oils that I like to use and I just use one of those applicator bottles and apply that on my scalp every week. And I'll go ahead and take a moisturizer as well and I'll saturate the ends of my hair with that as well. I make sure that I moisturize my hair every week regardless of whether it's being washed or not. With the wash and goes somewhere midweek i would go in with that same oil and i would apply that to my scalp as well and i would just give my scalp a little massage while i'm doing it i don't really play around with the curls because i don't want to lose the definition in my hair so what i do use is a sheen spray and it's probably not the most nourishing thing in the world just this one here it just helps to make my hair feel nourished basically the same thing with my braid outs and my twist outs well with my braid outs and twist outs they don't last me a full week so midweek again i will just use the oil on my scalp and massage my massage those oils in as well so with the braid outs and twist outs i would eventually have to wear my hair up in a bun yeah so no matter what hairstyle i'm wearing i never leave my hair unmoisturized even if i'm neglecting my hair I will still remember to put that oil on my scalp just to apply some sort of moisture don't get me wrong there are some days where i do forget but just jump straight back onto it and make sure to keep your hair moisturized at all times don't ever let it get dry and brittle because that's another reason why your hair is going to fall off so that time my hair had hydro fatigue i wouldn't moisturize my hair either i would just literally just apply water and i wouldn't moisturize my hair that's just a big no-no you just don't leave your hair to just get matted and dry and brittle like it's not a good idea and this is probably the reason why i like to wash my hair once a week even though some people might find it excessive but me washing my hair once a week allows me to have that time to re-moisturize my hair and clarify my scalp because as you know as well when you clarify your scalp you're giving your scalp the best opportunity to grow your hair because your hair needs a healthy environment to grow so when i wash my hair i won't apply the oils to my scalp but i'll do that midweek and when i pre-poo not when it's freshly washed because i like to have that clean environment so that my hair can grow so yeah Washing it once a week, it gives me that chance to re-moisturise and to prevent my hair from drying out. 
I did make a video of my weekly hair routine, but um, my hard drive failed on me, so I'll have to redo that video when I get a bit of time on my hands to record every day. And also when my hair's straight, I make sure to moisturize my scalp as well and my strands. And I just use the ORS Nourishing Machine Spray on my scalp and on my strands. You'll see me do that in my hair straightening routine as well. So. The next tip is a bit of a weird one for me. So before I went natural, I used to cut my hair every six weeks. When I was wearing my hair straight all the time, I would cut my hair every six weeks because at that time I just had my first son and my hair was really thin and I wanted my hair to be thick again. And I just liked having that blunt, fresh cut. It just makes my hair look so nice and thick. So I wanted to cut off all that damaged hair and just have that thick hair coming through. So I was doing that regularly up until, I can't remember, for the longest time anyway. And then someone, I remember someone said to me, Sarah, why are you cutting your hair so much? Why are you always cutting your hair? Just let it grow. And I was like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't cut my hair so often. And so that's why I cut back and started doing it every three months instead of every six weeks. But I must say, before I had that hydro fatigue, my hair was very healthy. And I will do the healthy hair journey just so that you can see what my hair used to look like. Because it was always had fresh ends, do you know what I mean? Like whenever I used to see split ends or damage, I will cut, I will cut my hair. So my hair was thriving and it was healthy but it just wasn't growing long. So my advice is to trim your hair often, but not too often to where you're kind of off the growth that's happening, if you get what I mean. Yeah, for a while I was struggling to get past bra strap length and I was just like, well, maybe it's because you're cutting your hair so much. <laughs> so now I probably will go back to cutting my hair every three months, just because that was working out really well with me before. Because I think six months is probably a bit too long because with wash and goes, braid outs, twist outs, your curls do rub up on your clothes, even though you might do all the most with protecting your hair with a headscarf and satin pillowcase, satin scrunchies and all that stuff. It still rubs up in your clothes. It's still suffering some sort of damage. Do you know what I mean? So I do recommend to trim your hair. Just don't go overboard. Don't get scissor happy. I used to be scissor happy. <laughs> I used to go out and buy some expensive scissors as well, just to feel like I'm doing a, a professional job. But yeah, you don't need to cut your hair excessively. And you will, like me, see some growth happening. Finally. I think I've covered everything that I've done differently this year compared to the other years. I will be recording my general natural hair tips, not particularly for growth, but for healthy hair as well. So I will be recording that video soon as well. But yeah, if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos like this. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.